Filipino Fable O. The anonym. It had no name because it had many names, yet it had to be in place to be in many places. With such a strange embodiment as a name shifter and a placeholder, the anonym was able to take the living form of the most dangerous being ever to inhabit both world. The Trick Maker. For hundreds of years, the Trick Maker tried to turn folk world into its own so-called fake world, where all the mythological and legendary creatures of folk world's literature were breathed into life and morphed into whatever the trick maker willed them to be. For the trick maker, as the eternal unconscious incarnate, perfectly understood almost all of the insights of real truth, and had keenly worked to transform the self as a catalyst to change others in accordance to its own false narratives of real truth. This, in essence, composed the core of the sinister laughter of the trick maker which had eluded the master custodians of folk world's literature no end, from Dean S. Fanceler to Damiana Eugenio to E. Arsenio Manuel to the esteemed Dean of Lower Mythology, Maximo Ramos, and which these master custodians of folk world's literature all had valiantly tried to dismiss and diffuse as mere fable. In truth, the anonym as the trick maker had laughed its way to a time in the real world where its people had allowed folk world's literature to tap into their badness. How did the trick maker escape the critical grasp of folk world's literature's master custodians? For the trick maker had concerned itself with where the master custodians of folk world's literature would find it difficult to bound it from its trick making ways. The trick maker had concerned itself with building a niche for oneself not in the realm of the superhumans, but rather, in the realm of the subhumans. In the realm of the subhumans, the trick maker discovered that it could effortlessly be a harbinger of the proverbial friend in need, like it posing as a subhuman, like a god, like a superhuman, or like all of them all at once. For the trick maker, dwelling in character, thrived in its own ambivalence as both subhuman and superhuman even posing as a divine albeit it was in reality more akin to being an inhuman, whose chief character trait was its own penchant for mischief. Hush! The master custodians would issue the stern warning amongst themselves, for they feared in even defining the one who had no name because it possessed many names, and who would be in place to be in many places. Who was to say, indeed, that one of them would be speaking to the trick maker in its perfect disguise. Both shady and shadowy, the trick maker would change identities like name plates, would be opposing authority figures in its wake, disrupting order, creating chaos swimmingly. It knew no sense of borders. A swindler of the highest order, the king of all buttles, the trick maker would even find a thriving business inside a cage, if even one master custodian alive today would be lucky enough to capture it and return it to where it could do no harm any longer, and where finally its sinister laughter would no longer be heard by the real world which could be easily led astray. Within the fortified walls of the highly secured archives of the Librarium Nazionale, the only place where the worldly voices of the real world and the otherworldly echoes of the folk world would engage each other in an eternal battle for the highly prized rewards of human consciousness and human imagination.